Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, The Land Geek, with your favorite niche real estate website, www.thelandgeek.com. We got the usual suspects today on the round table. We got the technician, Eric Peterson. Eric, how are you? I'm good. Good to see you. We got the Zen master, breathe in the mailing, breathe out the marketing. I'm already feeling calmer looking at him. Mike Zeno, how are you? Fantastic. Great to be here. And my heart just skipped a beat out of fear. The most feared woman in the country, the terrorist hunter, Mimi Schmidt. Mimi, how are you? I'm great. Cards are winning. Nationals are winning. It's all going well. I can't believe uh, DC still kept a, uh, a baseball team after uh, <laughs> Bryce Harper left, right? It's all good right now. We'll it's see how good. it goes. All right. We got the dude buddy eating cheese curds. Scott Bossman, the late night, o late night cap OG. Scott, how are you? Great, Mark. Thanks. You're not really eating cheese curds. I like to. Uh, just, I will be here in about a half hour. You know, exaggerate. Uh, we've got, I love it when you call me Big Papa, Tate Litchfield. Tate, good to see you. Thanks. Happy to be on. Good to see you. And last but not least, we've got Scott Todd from scotttodd.net landmodo.com. You're not automating your Craigslist and your Facebook postings, postingdomination.com forward slash the land geek and the knowledge bombs, investor ninjas.com. Scott Todd, how are you? Mark, I'm great. How are you? I'm great. We got a new topic for the round table. It's a head scratcher. Scott Todd, what are we discussing this week on the round table? All right, so somebody asked in the Land Geek Motivation Group if it would be okay to sell wholesale to like the various platforms. Like you buy a property for pennies on the dollar like we do, instead of going out to Craigslist or Facebook or eBay with the normal retail price, could you then sell it for what would be the wholesale price on these large platforms? Is that a good thing to do? I mean, could it generate sales? Why would I, why would I want to do it or why would I not do it? Let's see what everybody says. All right. That's a really interesting topic. I have a very, very strong opinion on this, but I will, I will bite my tongue until the end. Mike Zeno, let's start with you. Well, first of all, I personally don't think I saw comments that this person would destroy the market. I don't think it's possible. I think land is inefficient. I think that if somebody's out there, I don't, I don't think that they would destroy the market, but what should they go to, um, if you're going to put the effort and go on eBay and put the effort and go on Craigslist, I'd say just sell retail and, you know, put that effort in and get, get, the, get your, uh, get as much for it as you can. I, I mean, you're putting all that nice effort in, get as much money as you can. Um, so yeah, I, I think that it's, it's okay. If you really want to do that, go to eBay. I do think eBay is the bottom of the barrel when it comes to pricing. I think you can do good terms deals on there. I think by the terms of cash pricing and whatnot, that traditionally is, I would consider the bottom of the barrel. Those are people that are like, what's that place, Mark? Remember the, from uh, Star Wars where they go in the cantina there? Uh, where they, uh, what's the name yeah, of that? Yeah, the Moss uh, Eisley. What is it? The Moss Eisley Cantina. Moss Eisley Cantina. So that's eBay. Like, there's so many, like, you know, so many people in there. And it, it, that's just like, you know, oh, my, my son bit on that. I'm sorry. You know, there's all these kind of weird people in there. But the reality is, it's a really competitive flea market. So you're going to get bought on the barrel there anyway, typically. That's why we don't typically recommend that right away. Um, but anyway, the short answer is I don't think that you would destroy the market. Land's inefficient. I think that there's, um, you, you could sell it for $1,000 and then the guy that owns a lot next to you could go sell it for 6000 on terms. I, don't, I, don't, I think that's very, um, very uh, probable. And so if you want to, go ahead. But if you're going to put that effort into it, why not just list it retail then? Um, yeah, yeah, absolutely. I kind of got sort of off track after Scott Bossman knew the name of the Star Wars Cantina. And I just started looking up Star Wars trivia to try to stump him. But I thought <laughs> your answer for the part that I actually listened to it was really excellent because the market is inefficient and there's, you can't necessarily ruin a market, but I do have a strong opinion that I will save to the end. Um, 
Nightcap OG, sober Scott Bossman. What's your uh, what's your take? Uh, so, um, yeah, I guess my viewpoint is uh, I I understand why people need need to wholesale, especially when they're first starting out in this business. They need some cash flow, right? Uh, maybe they have a little bit more inventory. Maybe maybe they're uh, wanting to um, generate some cash flow for other deals. Uh, I think um, you know, for velocity's sake, honestly, you're gonna you're gonna get a ton of uh, more valuable leads just posting in our Facebook group uh, than than you are on eBay or Craigslist uh, if if things are priced appropriately and it looks like a fair deal. You know, if you can get, uh, if you're selling to another investor who can make double their money cash, triple or more of their money on terms, I think you're going to get a lot more bites in the Facebook group first. Um, and I think that would help prevent some confusion in the market with some leads on those other platforms uh, on Craigslist and eBay. So I guess that's my take. Um, I would, uh, I would go for, for the fast and easy deal and use velocity to my advantage. Uh, by by posting it in in one of our groups, I think it'll go quick. I like it. I like it. And I actually did focus the entire answer on that, Scott. Of course, it's Scott Bossman. Right. Yeah. And, and I'm I'm going to use my forced app now to not look at Star Wars trivia during the entire podcast. Uh, let's go to the terrorist hunter, Mimi Schmidt. Mimi, what are your thoughts? I guess in those investor heavy counties, I'm already seeing that the newer folks are offering a lot more in their mailings than the original offer prices were when it came in. So my costs are doubling right on the buy side. And if someone were to go in and start selling wholesale on the retail side, that just really squishes my margins, right? So, there's so many great places, like Scott was saying, for us to sell wholesale to each other that sell quickly. I sold two to Scott last week, and he already sold one of them. I sold one. Already. I saw it. I liked it on your Facebook group. So there's a lot. We can help each other out on the wholesale side. So I don't see a reason to go in and just squish those margins any more than they already are. Okay, let, let's 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 not move to to Eric or Tater Scott yet. Let's let's just stop there. Walk us through the year two, your deal. So Mimi, what'd you buy it for? What'd you sell the Scott for? And then okay. Scott, what did you sell it? And how'd you sell it? Okay, so I used to get them for 900 in this county. Now the wholesale is 1800 because of newbies going in and not really doing their homework. So it's doubled in the last two years, the buy side, okay? So I saw somebody wholesaling it out on the motivation group for 1500. So I bought them quickly and I thought, what the heck? I'm not even really interested in that subdivision of the county I'm in, but I thought, well, maybe I can wholesale them quickly, get some cash for another big deal I'm working. Sure enough, Scott hit me up, asked me about them. I thought, what the heck? So I only made, I had two of them. I only made about seven, six, $700 on the deal, but I just took the cash, moved on. I needed that money back to, to sell a really big buy and sell a really big property. So it helped me, but literally my margins are so squished. He'll sell that for 5,000, right? where she could have bought it for nine and sold it for five, right? We're buying them for 15 and 18 and selling them for five. So it's just cutting into the margin. If that person were to go and sell that property for $1,800 wholesale on the market, there would then be no margin. Okay, but you made six to $700 in a day cash. Yeah. Really I mean, it wasn't like, I, I mean, I assumed working with Scott Bossman's not a frustrating process. It's like send an email, he sends you the money, you deed the property and it's kind of done. Yeah. This is like dealing with like a Tate where he's going to beat you up, you know, on the deal. <laughs> yeah, I made a couple hundred bucks and I only own the properties for less than a week probably. Yeah, I'm just kidding, Tate. You're, you're <laughs> fun to work with. I'm pleasant. I'm a pleasant guy. No, I, yeah. Yes, I'm I just, bought I'm, wholesale from Tate too, yes. I mean, Mark, but you know, what, what Mimi just did, I think sometimes people... People don't think the way that she thinks, right? Like, you see, like if you go and you watch a show like, I don't know, like um, Pawn Stars or some other show, 
you know, their whole deal is what I'm going to buy things that I know I can make money at, you know, like, I mean, you could do this whole thing with land. You could go, if you knew pricing very well, man, you could go to Goodwill for Pete's sake. You go to Goodwill and start looking at the jewelry at Goodwill and you could find watches that maybe are discounted because maybe someone donated them and Goodwill doesn't know the price. They go and they, they sell them. And then you can go to like Facebook groups and yeah, okay, you make uh, you know a couple hundred bucks each or something. Look, a lot of times people think like big dollars, but a couple hundred bucks, man, like, okay, it's not moving the needle in Mimi's life, but think about what she's doing. She's literally picking up an asset. She's seen that she knows is undervalued. She picks it up, she puts it in her pocket, she finds somebody that wants to buy it at a higher price, which is buy low, sell high, even if it's a couple hundred bucks. What does she have? She's got a few hundred bucks at the end of the week that what can she do with? That's a, I mean, a thousand, 600 bucks, a thousand bucks. I mean, that's a car payment a month. That's, uh, you know, it's, I mean, you can have a nice weekend somewhere. I mean, for me, that's, a, that's like a, a normal bottle of wine right? on the weekend. So, but, but I think we're judging. Turn the, money. Turn the money. Yeah, there you go. A lot of people miss that one piece. It's not about maximizing the value. I mean, you honestly, yeah, you want to buy for, for 900, like Mimi's talking about and sell for 5,000. However, you know, if, if you can pick up these assets that you know are worth a few hundred dollars more, guess what? That's your mailing money. That's your, that's your milk money. Yeah. It's your lunch money. Yeah. All of this, all the money adds up, man. Like pick it all up, put it in your pocket and then sell it and do what Mimi did. That's a genius strategy to make more money. It's creating I, money from thin air. I agree. And I like that Mimi was just so intentional about it. She's like, okay, I need more money for this bigger deal in an area that I like more than this area where it seems it's overpriced. So she got rid of it. She got velocity of money. And um, I, I wholeheartedly agree with what she did. I, I, I think it's a phenomenal strategy. But then on the sell side, on the retail side, Scott Boston, how long did it take you to sell that parcel? And what's your deal going to look like? So it took me a week, uh, a week of heavily marketing it to my buyer's list, Facebook and Craigslist. Uh, I, my numbers on this deal are amazing. I mean, when you look at, look at annual yield. So I sold it for uh, 99 down with a two, 249 doc fee and 135 a month for 48 months. So my money's out in about 10 months. Um, <laughs> And it, it worked out well for me. I like the area. Uh, it seems to me, I don't know, I've worked that area before. Uh, I thought it might go on my buyer's list. I had another guy that, that I thought might be interested in it, but it worked out for me. And I think it just goes to show that, you know, um, again, as long as you're putting in the motions with your marketing, these things are gonna sell. So I, I was excited when I saw those properties from Mimi. <clears throat> All right, great. Great. Well, well, moving on to the same question to the technician, Eric Peterson. What's your, what are your yeah. thoughts? So I think, you know, you can go out there and market your property at whatever price you want, wherever you want. However, um, if you're talking about putting something out there at wholesale prices, it just makes way more sense to do that within the community, just from a kind of ease of use standpoint, right? I mean, if you're gonna advertise that property in the community, you know that the person on the other end of that deal is going to be reputable. They're gonna pay when they say they're gonna pay and they're gonna trust you. So it's so much smoother than going out there and putting that property real cheap on eBay or on Craigslist where people are gonna question your, who you are. They're gonna question whether this is a scam or not. And by the way, by putting things out there at a, at a lower price, significantly lower than the market, it will create more skepticism because it's like, well, this is too good to be true. When everything else in the area is twice this amount or three times this amount, whatever it is. Um, so those are all things that don't really make it ideal to go out there and advertise wholesale prices. And I would say, you know, I mean, think about, um, you know, 
any large company that's that's a brand you know nike for example they wholesale to retailers but they don't go out and wholesale to the individual customer you know it's kind of the same thing in in the land community like go wholesale to retailers other land sellers but but don't go out and do it in public yeah i think that's a really really good point in fact so good i'd like to steal it on maybe like a blog post or something and give you absolutely no credit, Eric Peterson. Uh, Tate Litchfield. I don't need credit. What do you, what do you, <laughs> no, I'm, I'm kidding. Of course I would give you credit. Um, Tate, what are your thoughts? You know, I, I don't like racing to the bottom, right? If you've got a good thing going, you bought right on a piece of property and you're going to make some money. Uh, I agree with what everyone else said. If you need to flip it and, you know, snowball that money into another deal or a bigger deal, go for it. But, uh, you know, we have a nice inefficient marketplace that I believe will always remain inefficient, but it doesn't hurt to have friends. I mean, I saw an example this last week on the Facebook community where a current flight school student um, went through the investors toolkit and they read that article or the section where Mark talks about more deals than they can handle. This flight school uh, attendee basically got to a point where they're mailing was so effective that they had more deals than capital. So they tied up all these properties. Uh, they were going to go through the closing process and they went to the Facebook group and said, Hey, I'm looking for somebody to help me sell these properties. I saw the message. I looked at the properties. They were in a County that I didn't work in. So I, I forwarded them on, on to one of my coaching students. He looked at that set of uh, properties, decided not only did he want one, but he wanted three or four of them bought them. The person who was selling them made some money. They can go out and buy a couple new properties. And the guy who bought them is going to turn around and sell them for, you know, four or 500% ROI. So we just got such a good thing going. I just don't think it'll be easier to do what you're trying to do anywhere else. I mean, you can try it on the retail side of things, but why, ra why race to the bottom? Because if you start selling them for way below what everybody else is, you know, you're going to have some un unhappy uh, colleagues out there, put it that way. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I couldn't agree with you more. Scott Todd, well, what I, are your I mean, thoughts? I would say go, go to Landmoto and listen to Landmoto in the wholesale group there, right? Just go to Landmoto, put a wholesale price on it. That way other land investors can see it on there when they log in to, to, to look for look wholesale properties. Use the, the motivation group as well. Use whatever channels you have. Now, I will tell you that when I got going, uh, right after my very first boot camp, you know, I had a situation like I needed cash, right? Like Mark, I got to my first boot camp. I had five, I had purchased five properties. I had sold four of them on terms and I had one left and I needed, I needed the money. And so what I did was I took your advice, which was I went to eBay and I put it on eBay. But the way that I did it on eBay was instead of doing it to where you would bid up, you know, and the lowest or the highest bidder would win. What I did was I did a 30 day auction there. And when I did the 30 day auction, I put the price that I thought was the retail price on there. And I also put or best offer and I allowed people to make an offer. And then what I did was I had eBay basically nix any offer and like decline any offer that was below what, what I wanted. So now all of a sudden, if let's say I was, I would really wanted like, I want, what I wanted was like 5,500 for the property. It's a 20 acre property in Northern Nevada. I wanted 5,500 for it. I put 5,500 or best offer, actually 4,900 or best offer. And what happened was somebody came along and, and I said, anything under, you know, 3,750 kill it. So to decline it and eBay went to work and, and did the work for me. And then I had a guy offer me $3,900 for the property. And I, uh, I was also charging a $497 dock fee on there. So basically it was going to work out to be like 40, uh, $4,400 for the property. And what I did was before I accepted his offer, I sent him a message and I said, Hey, I need to talk to you. Can I get a phone number to call you? Or can you call me? And we exchanged phone numbers. I called him and I'm like, listen, I will accept your deal. 
However, I want to make sure that you understand that there's a $497 doc fee. So before I closed it through eBay and accepted his offer, I got him on the phone and we still closed through eBay. But basically what I did was I did end up wholesaling that property away because it was worth probably more than that. But the true price was never really disclosed out to the marketplace. And then, then what I learned through that process is, you know, if you build, if you build your buyer's list correctly and you build your buyer's list, well, there's no reason to go out and to start to, to market this lower price property out into the marketplace. What you should do or what you could do is you can go out there and collect the email addresses like we teach. Go out there and collect it full retail price. And then what you do is you do something very cool. You go to your buyer's list, which is stealthy, right? It's under the radar. It's in your own little contained world. You can make up whatever you want and you can go, hey, listen, one day flash sale, this property, this amount of money. And now you're, if you're going to do that because you feel the need to do it, which I don't like the idea, but if you feel the need to do it, well then do it under the radar, but not in the general marketplace. That's not cool to do in the general marketplace. Bring it back to your buyer's list and treat your buyer's list like you're their, their rich uncle, right? Like I got deals for you, man. I'm going to give you my best deals and they will, your buyer's list will love you for that. Yeah, I mean, th th that, is, that is such a great strategy, Scott Todd. And so many people, when they first start out, don't really think about their, their buyer's list because Land Modo's made it really easy and Facebook and Craigslist and all our automation tools. But the one thing that you own, the one asset that you really own is your buyer's list. And it's true, it doesn't signal to the market that the price is this. Um, because it is stealthy. And I, I love what Eric said about Nike. Um, I love, I really loved what everybody said, Tate racing to the bottom. Um, if I had paid any attention to what Mike said, what Mike said was probably great too. And, and me, me and Scott as well. But, you know, living through the, um, the ups and downs of a market in an area, I've actually had a wholesaler ruin a market for me on eBay, doing exactly what you're discussing. And it was no fun to go through that. And it really, I was upset. So of course, being the shy person I am, I did call him and say, you're ruining my market. And he was like, so? He's like, I don't, you know, this is my, my business model. I'm Walmart. I said, well, I'm Nordstrom. So I'll buy everything from you. Don't even market it. And he said, okay. So I, I just literally created my own wholesaler and said, the only way that I will buy from you though, is if you don't market anymore on my very lucrative channel. And he was happy with it. So if you do think that it's really a smart strategy to go to the general marketplace and, you know, essentially underbid everybody, don't come to us. We'll buy it. We'll buy all of it. We'll take it down. No worries. And, um, and that way we're keeping the market, uh, where it should be. And it, it's, it's not going to get ruined because you're racing to the bottom essentially, which is a long-term terrible strategy anyways. I don't know. I was kind of wordy there. Any other thoughts? No, I feel like there's a Scott Bossman Star Wars analogy here somewhere. <laughs> oh, Scott Bossman Star Wars analogy. What would it be? Um, the, the one where, is it Obi-Wan? These are not the properties you're looking for. There you go. All those wholesale Use the ones. Jedi mind trick. Yes. These are not the platforms you should sell wholesale on. <laughs> I like that. Awesome. Awesome. Well, I thought that was a really good uh, topic, Scott Todd. And um, something that if you do have more, you know, additional questions about it, you know, certainly email us directly or go to the Facebook group. But I think it's pretty clear that 
you don't need to go to these general marketplaces where people are retailing properties to wholesale. Go to the Facebook groups, go to Landmodo. There's a spot there. Go to us individually. We'll buy it. And that way it's very stealthy. Go to your buyer's list and you're not essentially ruining a market. And if you don't care about that, then okay. That's fine as well too. But the market's the market and uh, it's a jungle out there. But I would add too, like not only is it kind of the right thing to do is I think kind of what we're saying is to come back to the community, but it's also a lot easier. If you're going to go market on all those platforms, it's so much work. Why do you want to take a smaller profit? You know, just wholesale it to the community. It's easy. All it costs is the report right? The and platforms look at, look at, cost yeah. you a monthly payment every month, right? Wholesale it, all it costs you is recording fees. You're right. It's cheaper. It's easier. Right. It's, it's kind of like saying, hey, look, I'm having a garage sale every week. Who are you attracting at that garage sale? The people that will never buy retail from you. They'll constantly be negotiating. You're training your buyers list to only buy at the lowest price. Again, Racing to the bottom, to quote Tate Litchfield, is not a good long-term strategy. And but listen, you, you, you a hard know, hustle. Like you, and Mark, when you attract the the buyers, like you were just talking about, the the garage sale buyers, they will make your life much more miserable. Okay, like I don't, I think we could all talk about that. I mean, like, would anybody disagree with that statement? Like the the worst buyers I ever had were the ones where like the, the payment was low or something. Oh my gosh, man. Have I got stories? I got stories now. I got, I got a PTSD from one guy. So that's they a whole story. To, they're the first ones to default and the first ones that want to live on the land and destroy it. Right. Don't to, do to it. Qu- right. To quote uh, one of our favorite boot camp sayings, redneck default. If you weren't at boot camp, speaking you don't of, get the joke. Speaking speaking of boot camp, Mark, like it's coming up. It is coming up. Is it two weeks? Three weeks? Well, it, this comes out next week. This comes out on the fifteenth. So, so two weeks. By, you got two weeks. If you have not been to boot camp, man, I would try to get in. I don't know. I don't know if we have any spots left, honestly. Oh, but if yeah, I mean, but try. Yeah. If someone drops out the last minute, get on the wait list. What 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 about uh what about what about like offering a higher price to get in the door? I mean it's free, but like what if you like offered to to, to grease the doorman, and uh you, you know someone who did who's who's not paying, or got the lower price, like we have to boot them out. That wouldn't be cool, but you know just saying. I mean you know boot camp's not Club Fifty Four, Scott Todd. I'm just saying, like, listen, listen, we got a, we got a new setup this time. So there might be a doorman at the door that can, for the right amount of money, get you in. It's Eric. Better. It's better than Club 54. It really is. It's better than Club 54. It, it really is. And there's no hangovers. There's no regrets. You know, so it's, it really is phenomenal. I love boot camp. I'm really excited. Um, and I do think that speaking of boot camp, we should let everybody know that today's podcast is sponsored by, you guessed it, Flight School. Because with Flight School comes the Investor's Toolkit. And with the Investor's Toolkit is included our two free tickets to boot camp. So with one investment in Flight School, you get the do it yourself Investor's Toolkit. You get the two free tickets to boot camp. And better is that you get Scott Todd leading you over 14 weeks executing in real time on this business. You will make offers. You will mail, make offers. You will do deals in real time with your flight school class. It is phenomenal. Learn more. Go to thelandgeek.com forward slash training. So I thought this was a a really great round table actually and and a, a really great topic. If you're getting value from the round table, please email it to a friend that you know could 
improve their life with a little passive income. If they have solo economic dependency, which means if they're not working, they're not making any money, help them out. Send it out on the interwebs. Maybe go on the instas or the faces or the tweets, whatever mm -hmm. they're called, and, and share it. And certainly do us these three little favors, subscribe, rate, review the podcast. Send us a screenshot of that review to support at thelandgeek.com. We're going to teach you how to double your money 30 days or less with cash with a new course teaching you how to do it properly, which is um, going, we'll give that to you for free, as well as the passive income launch kit, which is normally 97 bucks, thelandgeek.com um, or support at thelandgeek.com. Send us that screenshot of that review. We'll send it for free. Um, you know, I'm still got that Star Wars trivia in my head, so I can't, I can't really, you know concentrate on two things at once so are we ready to do this what? oh wait of course we can. we're not done who's doing the tip of the week i'll do it i was ready in case you said something but i was gonna let it slide otherwise <laughs> maybe okay. there's tradition here yeah. what is the tip of the week a website a resource a book something actionable for the art of passive income listeners to go improve their businesses improve their lives what have you got? So I found this site called outdoorphotographer.com. And in it, you can search like the national parks. And in there, it'll give you a lot of different information about the local area that can be used for your ad copy. And it'll also even tell you the best times of the day to, to have your photographer go out and snap photos. So if you're training a new photographer, like I found a couple on bark.com and I give them instructions. Now I can tell them, go towards sun, you know, sunset, right? And then even um, if you click the link, scroll down, it'll tell you uh, the closest other sites nearest to that national park. So I just thought it was interesting. And it has great photos of the local area if you want to use them for your ads too. So. Very cool. Very cool. I love it. I love it. Um, well, I want to thank the listeners again. Please uh support the podcast again send us a screenshot of that review support at thelandgeek.com we really really appreciate it all right we ready to do this one two three let but freedom, freedom ring ring i see scott bossman did a nice delay there i realized i was muted and hit the unmute too late so all right mike zana what's going on with that name over there scott bossman as well well <laughs> i changed my name listen when i when i was speaking i think it's scott bossman you know so i'm scott bossman as well <laughs> uh, he wants preferential treatment too he so wants some attention you, do you do you feel, Mike, that, that Scott's getting more attention on this roundtable than, than you normally would? Scott Torch pointed this out before. This is not I must be the only ones that were pointing this out. We there's a trend here. Yes. Dude by OG gets gets the big cats. You get really? All right. All right. Well look, maybe just out of my awareness. And um, you know. I, I should be spreading the, the round table love. I'll just say that, Mike, when you speak, my resting heartbeat goes down about five beats. I just feel very, you know, just very zen and very happy. Um, when Eric Peterson speaks, I have to say that I feel a little smarter in some way. That Nike analogy was one of those analogies where I just thought, man, he he really just, said something that I wish I would have said. And instead of going into like a shame spiral that Eric is 10 times smarter than me, I just said, look, that's awesome. I'll probably have to steal that and give you no credit, which is obviously a joke. And, um, you know, Tate, you, Tate's always feeling the love, right, Tate? Always, yeah. Yeah. Um, and uh scott todd of course you know you're you're good right no scott bossman but it's okay 
Right. Well, I mean, we, if, we all know the love affair. You no, know, you, you and Mimi are team Microsoft, so I feel like there's a little edge there for the two well, of you. What do you think Bossman has? And Zeno now has jumped out. So, what does Bossman have? I'm a Mac a guy. Mac, Mac oh, guy. Boy. Oh, I see. Right. I see what's happened here. So, Zeno, Zeno, Mimi, and Myself and Tate, we're all together. You I don't have one of those. No, <laughs> oh, no, we got no, you no. to admit it finally. <laughs> no, I do not have one of those. I'm going to continue with my <sighs> troublesome MacBook Pro. The troublesome. Troublesome. You guys have, wait, it's just because like it's, it's troublesome doesn't mean it's not amazing. Listen, when you guys get banned from an airplane, I'm gonna laugh, laugh, and you show up to boot camp and you can't have your computer with me. You're gonna be like, I gotta, I had to ship it to myself. I gotta we wing my show up at boot camp if we can't bring our computer. <laughs> yeah, we'll yeah, be you'll be laughing. Yeah, you won't be laughing when you gotta do everything there, big guy. So Mimi, yeah. uh, Zeno, and myself, we, or Scott Boston as well. I don't know. Uh, the the three of us, we got it. Do you guys, do you guys ever have stress dreams before boot camp? Like you forget. Um, Something. I do. I, I don't have the boot camp. I have the fight department where I go to a fire and don't have my gear. That's pretty stressful. It's kind of, but not for boot camp. No. Yeah, that's that's what exactly my dream, Mike, is. I I show up and I forgot my my laptop, or the uh, yeah, usually it's my laptop. Yeah, not being prepared is. It must be a common theme then when something's happening because I've had those and it's just it's a really awful feeling. But that's yeah. why we. Their day early. It's very forgettable. And then, yeah, then, then, you know, in the dream, I'm hearing this from Scott Todd. Oh, you forgot. Of course you forgot your laptop. Here, use my <laughs> Surface. <laughs> and then, yeah. like, of course, during the presentation, it doesn't work because it's a Surface. Well, it gets a virus. One day, one day in boot camp, someone like you, maybe, you're going to be like, Scott, can I borrow your Surface? Oh, my computer's crashed or it's updating right now. It's taking forever to update. Be careful, though, at boot camp, not to let Tate touch your Surface again like last exactly. time. Exactly. Exactly. Tate yeah. is banned from five, five feet around it. He purposely spiked it with something. I don't know. No, 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 no. <gasps> oh, that Tate, you, Surface is faulty. Listen, I see Tate. I see Tate at Flight School Live. He's like googling over the surface. He's like, he's on the fence. He is on the fence. And I think this I think was all he needs a little push, little push, and he's on my side, Mark. You know what though? I think um, Tate and I are gonna go during the VIP lunch to this new Indian buffet, Kazana. Tate, it's, it's, literally, it's literally like saving you a trip to India. It's Tate, like done. the SOG. It, it's amazing. It's so good. Let's do it. I'm the game. That. Yeah. I'm or maybe, that. maybe you know what? Maybe stay an extra day and we'll have like what we'll call the Tampa foodie day because, oh, Scott Todd's Tampa food was so good. Oh, and I've got I see places. the jealousy coming out now. Yeah. I've got places. <laughs> You're going to have to, I mean, you will have to step up your game a little bit, Mark. I mean, the, the pressure is on. Uh, Scott did deliver last time. We only ate at Panera twice over the three-day period, so that was nice, but uh, no. Not, not true. Fake news, in fact. We didn't eat Panera. In, in fact, I got we the ate story cake. here of Tate going to Cheesecake Factory. <laughs> All right, Mike and Mimi, should should we have a East Coast boot camp in 2020? Yes, I, I was wondering when you were going to release the Florida date for the 220 boot camp. Yes. But, but do we do Tampa or Orlando? Well, I've or never been to Tampa, Tampa, so I vote Tampa. Tampa? I heard we were doing Nashville. I vote oh, Nashville. Is, is Nashville East Coast? That's what? That's Midwest, isn't it? Close enough. No. What time zone is that, Nashville? Central. You could do Atlanta. It really? That's on East Coast time. Atlanta's East Coast. Mimi saying yes. Mike, Huge Atlanta. Very easy to get yeah. to. So easy to get to. It is. Yes. You got crab cakes in Baltimore. I got the perfect. Ooh. I'll set it up. I'll go. 
I'll, I'll go seek that out. I'll find I feel it. like Kate won't go if there's not a fishing spot. Tampa, I mean, Maryland. That does help fish, uh, can grease fish the wheels Georgia? a little bit. Of course he can fish in Georgia. He can go hillbilly hand fishing. What are you talking about? No can way you? I'm doing that. That's <laughs> scary. <laughs> you wouldn't do that, Dave? Like, you wouldn't go hillbilly hand no. fishing? No. No, I, I would never. <laughs> Scott, let me, let me explain this to you. You're going to be wait, on your wait, hands wait, and knees. Wait, wait, wait. Wait, 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 wait. I gotta catch you up. I gotta catch you up. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. I'm gonna let you get to it, but hold on one second. Mark, I think we need to have a team build where we all go hillbilly hand fishing, including you. Mark, have you seen those videos? The guys Mark. are grappling with these huge catfish in the mud. It's just a People you know, die like, though, doing this. I, I, I would no, love can't. to do that, but I think yeah, we're doing a team build. Telly ride. Who's up for Telly ride? In March. It snows there, you so know. Scott and I are probably... Eric's no. out, too. <laughs> Eric's out. It's tough to get to, though. Yeah, just let's go, snow it. go, we just go, go somewhere warm, warm man. Mark doesn't even own a snow jacket. Yeah, it's not no, a I, snow jacket. What is I, I do. Snow jacket. I only wear... It it's called I a paka. Paka. <laughs> it's just a parka for Scott as opposed to a full-blown... Yeah. Bossman's like it's it's twenty below. This feels great. He's like in shorts and a t-shirt. Yeah, windbreaker. Shoveling the snow into his own mountain yeah. out there. Exactly. I think he still has snow from last year on his lawn. <laughs> just melted. It just Honestly. melted. <laughs> Scott, do you own a freezer? Do I own a freezer? No, no, Scott Bossman, dude, buddy. We do own a freezer, but it is nice in the winter. You, you know, if, if the freezer's full, you just throw it out on the patio. It's right next to the kitchen. You're good to go. What do you think about getting, I saw someone was talking about one of those, you know, those freezers you store, you store like lots of food in, but they use it for ice baths, Mark. Maybe we should do 2020. We should all get those and do ice baths. It's supposed to be very healthy for you. I, no, I'm still doing, I'm still doing the cold shower thing. I love it. Are it's you still like doing it? degrees in your area, isn't it? Cold shower? In Arizona? No, it's it's getting a little cooler now. Like the the mornings are cooler. It's all relative. I do take a cold shower. Part of my morning routine is after the steam room is the cold shower. Yeah, your morning routine is so good. There's a new uh, health club that's being built like right by my house, and certainly I don't need to join a health club, but I do need to compete with your morning routine. And I've got now two supply razors. I've got the, you know, the, the badger thing. I just need to go to the, the, the spa. What's it, what's it called? The, the, the sauna and the steam room. The, yeah. The, yeah. So I need to do the sauna steam room thing, the cold shower, shave. And then the whole time I'm doing this facing FaceTime you. <laughs> <laughs> the guys in the steam you know. room will about by that. <laughs> yeah. So I, I, like, I Change it, Mark. I I uh, I take the morning. I do all different little things, work and stuff, and then, like I haven't gone, but I don't eat. Like I won't. I'll eat one meal a day again. So I'll go. Like today, we're gonna go. When we get off the podcast, I'll go do the whole routine then, and then we'll go get some fish and chips and some whiskey, and that'll be my one meal for the day. Wow. Nice. Mimi, what do you think about this whole intermittent fasting thing? No, when he mentioned that it might be screwing up with his metabolism, I no, I can't do it. I eat you like. Can't? I eat, I eat throughout the day and I think it keeps my, my metabolism moving. And you know what I'm learning is that it really depends upon your body type. Like I, I mentioned, my husband tried that one diet and he lost 10 pounds and I gained four in like a matter. I just, it may work for him. That won't work for me. Mindset though. The fasting, I think truly puts you in a Zen mindset. When you, when you get over that hangry part and you go into the zone, you're like, Shh. I have to go without wine and cheese. Isn't that what Ernest Shackleton said, Mark? The, the, what separates men is those who can deal with hunger? Wow. Maybe. I, I don't know. I think what, honestly, what, what separates men is, do you know Star Wars trivia or not? <laughs> not to figure Scott Boston. Scott Boston, bring it in. Bring it in, man. Tug it out. I feel like you a good Chewbacca impersonation, Scott Boston. I just got this feeling. <laughs> <laughs> no way I'm doing that on here. But you can <laughs> do it. It'd be when, so when's, when's Nightcap the musical? You could you could incorporate like a Chewbacca, you know, thing, like an intro Chewbacca. All right. We'll incorporate some Star Wars into the next one. 
Nightcap, by the way, Mark, I don't know if, if everyone is aware of this now. We have a set time every week, Wednesdays at 10 p.m. Eastern. Oh, fantastic. So, I jumped on for like a few minutes last time. It was great. Yeah, it was awesome. Matt, Matt Forbes, I think, was just hammered by the end. <laughs> just hammered. <laughs> I mean, I was, I was a little worried, honestly, <laughs> after <laughs> watching it. I love it. Yeah. I got a bug out, guys. All right. I got a call. See, see Scott. All right. Well, thanks, yeah. everybody. Because now that Scott Boston's got to leave, like, why even continue? It's over. That's the Chatting. point. It's all over. <laughs> see you Just guys. Just kidding. I don't yeah. Know. All right. I'm really excited to see everybody uh, in a few weeks at boot camp. It's going to be awesome. And um, yeah, see everybody later. Have a good one. See ya. Tate, Indian buffet man. Do it. I'm game. All right.